Tuning the current loop. The current loop tuning is dependent primarily on the inductance of the coil. Uh, so today we're going to use the Junus PWM amplifier to control current in some inductors. Now these could be motor coil inductors or, or whatnot. Uh, the coil resistance is, is not as important as the inductance. Um, the power supply voltage, of course, affects the, uh, the slew rate limit, and the inductance value, if it's really low, uh, less than 200 microhenries, we could get into trouble with uh, ripple currents, or if it's less than 100 microhenries, we could have a short circuit. Uh, large inductance, of course, is fine. It just takes longer to get the current up to the right value, so we'll see how to tune large inductors and we'll witness large slew rate limiting with that. So I have various inductors. I have a drum core 150 microhenry inductor. I have a 100 microhenry air core inductor, a 1 millihenry air core inductor, and a 10 millihenry air core inductor. I also have a pr proprietary voice coil mechanical assembly, which you can't see all of it. Uh, there's a Junus amplifier here. Uh, powered by a 26 volt power supply and I've got a current clamp and a scope probe uh, to measure the PWM frequency and the current to the coil. I also have a serial cable kit and a USB to serial adapter by B&B &B, which will use serial binary from CME2 to communicate and set the drive. There's also a control connector to do analog or PWM commands to operate in a current or e even in a voltage mode. So I've connected to the Junus with a serial cable and I've gone through the settings. I'm going to call it a rotary. I could call it a linear uh, current or velocity, which is a voltage mode. Command source analog or PWM. There's also serial binary protocol. And uh, we get a current loop and an analog command and the motor data. Uh, I'm going to enter the coil data. This is a Parts Express air core inductor, S141.1. There's no inertia, but I put some values in there. Um, I gave it a torque constant uh, and a back EMF constant with peak and continuous torque just so I could get 10 amps continuous 20 peak. Uh, there's a velocity limit which would act in a voltage mode to limit the, the voltage. Um, the resistance and inductance comes from the specification sheet from the air core inductor. So I looked up these guys. Uh, it's a looks like a French coil maker. So here's the specification for the uh, the point zero. Sorry, I've got the point zero. One mil Henry point. Two one, actually, it is a 0.1, so it's 1.1 millihenry, 0.23 for the inductance. That's the only real data I have for that, so I put that in, and I hit calculate to get the initial calculated tuning values for the current loop based on the motor's inductance and, you know, somewhat the resistance. And we get some current loop values that are calculated, and these will typically give us a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth based on good data. So we can run the uh, bandwidth test to check that out. Um, you know, sometimes it's plus or minus a little bit, but yeah, it looks like we got about that. Uh, we also have an auto tuning, and uh, we can use the auto tuning to tune the current loop. So it sets the integral to zero and it cranks up the P term until we see some overshoot. Um, and then it backs down a little bit, then it cranks up the integral term. So we'll see what the calculated values are and how that works. And uh, we can look at a typical loop response here of, of an inductor when you apply a voltage. So the current changes and if the gains are high you'll get a little ringing. Um, this is related to the bandwidth. If the uh, change in current over the change in time is, is set, the rise time from 10 to 90 percent measurement, you can use this formula to calculate the the bandwidth that you're going to get, say you go from 0 to 10 amps, you know, what? how long does it take from the 10 to 90 percent, the rise time, 
and then use the rise time in the formula to give an estimate of the current loop bandwidth that you should be able to get. Um, the other effect of that uh, PWM is the uh, ripple current, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, the current loop tuning is progressing. It takes a little time to do that, so we'll just let it do its thing. But we can see on the scope, there is a uh, PWM effect at the output of the drive, and which is controlling the current. We don't see much current here, but you can see the sine wave that the uh, auto-tuning is generated. So the auto-tuning is calculating the bandwidth by doing some testing. The high current loop bandwidth is what we tune for in the, in the auto-tuner. That's 2.7 kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. That's more than we need for a, a servo application. It may be useful in some other applications. But CME2 selects the medium values, which give us a current loop bandwidth of a more reasonable value. So the calculated values were pretty good. The auto-tuned values uh, may, may seem a little, a little better. Um, maybe it's a little less bandwidth. Yep, there we go. 800 hertz of current loop bandwidth from the auto-tuner. Um, I like to do my own tuning, so I use the CME2 scope, uh, function generator, current, apply to current, uh, auto setup checkbox, and hit start. So real easy to get going. I see a little integral overshoot there, but let's take a look at the gains. Again, integral gets set to zero. We shoot for the P term. Too much proportional gain. I double it every time, and you see some overshoot. There's a little bit of overshoot. Let's just make it excessive. Okay, uh, there's ringing there, so too much current loop gain. Cut it in half. Bring that value back down to 600. Eh, it's a little, a little ringy. I can knock it down a little bit. Let's give it 500. And let's go for the integral term. Again, too much integral term is too ringy. Um, this is a small signal tuning, so we'll take a look at the uh, large signal tuning, I'm going to give it a full 10 amps, and we'll see what the step response is there. There you go. There's 10 amps of current loop. And to see what the, uh, the scope is doing to us here. There's the uh, plus or minus 10 amp response on the scope. So we'll take a, a look at the uh, slew rate limiting we have here. So there's a little bit of time it takes for the current change 10 amps so the delta time is about 0.3 milliseconds so on the calculator 0.3 milliseconds 333 Hertz actually less than that for a sine wave but that's a that's a step response so I've added bus voltage terminal voltage servo and PWM limit voltage limited and we can see as we're trying to get current to flow through the inductor to respond, we're getting a voltage limit. That's okay in normal. Uh, it takes time to rise even as the full power supply voltage is applied to the coil. And then the voltage droops back down to a few volts for the IR drop and the current is stabilized. So uh, voltage limit warning is no problem. It just means you're a little slew rate limited. Okay, so now I've uh, hooked up my 100 microhenry or 0.1 millihenry inductor, calculated new tuning values, and I just went right to the scope to take a look at the uh, response of the system. And I can see no voltage limit warning, not much effect on the power supply. It's pretty good tuning. It gets up to steady state. We could tweak the tuning a little bit, increase the CP and CI, but again, uh, it, it looks rather nice, and even on the scope, we have a, a nice looking plus or minus uh, 10 amp square wave. What is interesting is the ripple current has increased a little bit based on the PWM switching. Um, it, it doesn't look very bad, but we have you know more of, of a little ripple going on here. Again, the PWM switching frequency at 15 kilohertz will cause a small rise in the current as we switch the PWM. This is at the uh, worst case ripple, ripple frequency, which is at about half voltage across the motor, but it comes from the formula. 
for the change in current over the change in time equals the voltage divided by the inductance. So large inductance gives a small ripple current, small inductance gives a large ripple current. Um, also, the frequency is twice the switching frequency for the Junus because it's a center-weighted PWM, and normally you don't see much ripple at all unless you just happen to be at half voltage. Okay, now that I'm done melting the enamel off my tiny air core inductor that's probably only rated for an amp, and I've been pumping 10 amps to it, um, I'm going to use my larger air core inductor that's uh, uh, much more inductance. Same thing, slew rate limiting, larger inductors just take longer to get up to final value. We can see there's more slew rate limiting. And if we measure the time it takes to go from minus 10 amps to 0 amps, uh, we see it's, it's still a little, a little bit longer, a longer time. Okay, now I've hooked up my BEI voice coil. Uh, which is going to move back and forth here uh, with current control. Um, you know, there, you could have some feedback to measure position and close the position loop, but not with the current mode amplifier. This is just going to control current to the coil. So I don't know what the inductance is. I haven't looked up the part number, but I'm going to guess at about one millihenry, and then I'll calculate initial tuning values based on that guess. And then we'll take a look at the current loop tuning to see what that looks like. Again, auto setup, checkbox, hit start. So that is much more inductance because it's taken longer. Okay, so we cranked it up, too much gain. Cut it in half. Still a little buzzy, I'm gonna knock it down a little bit there. This is a rather large inductance. And let's give it uh, a little too much interval term to see where that is. There's an integral windup, a little bit of overshoot there. <clears throat> let's cut it in half. We'll do a momentary test at 10, am 10 amps. Okay, maybe we'll just do the test at 2 amps. As it turns out, this uh, coil is 10 millihenries and 5 ohms, so 10 amps and 5 ohms is 50 volts, and I've only got a 26 volt power supply. So we can see that we got uh, substantial voltage limit warning for a long period of time, and then we finally got the continuous current. So to deliver 2 amps at 5 ohms, it's about... 10 volts plus a little bit for some some droop here and there but uh, voltage limit warning because of the slew rate limiting uh, what we should do in this application is probably not try to do anything at 100 Hertz square wave it looks like we can do a hundred Hertz sine wave with no problem and let's get below the mechanical time constant and see how that looks that's a Gatlin gun. Uh, let's try a little, little less current, and uh, we can do, yeah, we could do five amps. This has a high mechanical time constant. Let's do point two and get a little motion out of it. There. So I brought down the uh, frequency to seven hertz no voltage limiting, 0.3 amps, and this thing is uh, rocking and rolling. Um, so, you know, there's a mechanical time constant around 10 hertz on, on most mechanisms. You know, force equals mass times acceleration. So, uh, current produces uh, uh, force in the coil, and that, you know, the coil current develops a field which works against, you know, pushing against the uh, the magnets in the system. So there's magnets here and there's there's the voice coil and uh, the sine wave is just pushing the mechanism. Uh, when you when you hit higher frequencies at higher frequencies the distance of travel will be shorter. Uh, we have to increase the current at higher frequencies. At 50 Hertz we seem to be hitting some voltage limit warnings. 
Um, yeah.